How's it going, everybody? Hope everybody had an awesome Christmas. I definitely did. Best Christmas I can remember. Um, bringing Charlie a Christmas dinner. Some of the family uh, in from out of town had never seen her. And actually, a couple of my aunts and uncles haven't met her yet. So, what a great Christmas. Thank you to everybody that took the time to wish myself and my family a Merry Christmas. I really appreciate that. Had a lot of interest in this saw, and uh, I really wanted to get it running last time. Unfortunately, I did not. Um, before I shelf this thing, let's dig farther into this. You guys were curious, so this is an old style um, ignition system. A lot of old saws ran these, okay? This has an outer cover and, and an inner flywheel. This is not actually the flywheel here, okay? This is just an aluminum shroud that covers it. Um, these flywheels are super, super hard to pull off. And uh, any of you guys that have dealt, this is a Bosch ignition system, super common, uh, still around them. Your, uh, I believe your, your 056, 045s, those kind of saws ran these. Um, 2100s, 298s, um, a lot of Saks Domar had these. Um, you're going to come into contact with these if you work on old saws. Um, I rigged up a puller. It's an ugly puller, but it's going to work. Uh, I took a big washer, something you'd use on some machinery, something big, and uh, I drilled three holes in it, and then I put a piece of pipe, welded that on, and then a nut and a bolt. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to bolt this on and see if we can get this thing off, okay? First thing I'm going to do I'm going to apply some heat to this outer flywheel because like I said, if you guys have ever dealt with these, you can't bang these off. Um, people were saying try an air hammer. Um, friends, I did that to the Sax Dolmar and I actually cracked a little bit of the, of the crankshaft off the end. So be careful if you're going to do that stuff. That is that, Those kind of moves are moves that I would use on a rototiller engine or you know, uh, a V-twin uh, Kohler or something like that. Chainsaws are so, they're very fragile. So um, anyhow, to each their own, um, I have not had luck with the air hammer. So I made this puller. I'm going to get my torch out and just put a little bit of heat around here and then we'll bolt this on. And of course, I'll bring you guys in so you guys can see. Let's see what's underneath here. I can't really see, but it looks like it's full of rust. And if it is, hopefully we can shine it and and sand the contacts and then maybe we'll get spark in this thing if not i'll have to dig around and see what i have for parts i think i have a coil what's coming up on the channel uh i will play with this for a little bit but i want to get that 200t running um i can't get a chain for it uh, a lot of the still dealers are closed i'm gonna go get a proper still chain for that saw run it a little bit in the wood if it's good then i'm gonna port that saw so that's coming up I want to do the 288 Holtz Forma, um, <clears throat> the bulletproofing of one. I'm going to do that, get that saw running, and then I'll mail that saw off to Texas. That's an interesting saw. If you guys are interested in learning how to port, those saws have short blowdown and a lot of uh, inherent issues with the design. They have low and mid-range power. They don't scream. They don't make a lot of top-end power, the 288. So you either like them or you don't. I like 288s um, for very specific uses. I don't like them all the time. Um, but again, that's just me. So we're going to dive into 288s. Then we can talk about the transfers and those, blowdown, all that kind of stuff. Then after that, I'm kind of itching to port something modern. Um, I think I'm going to do a 372. Probably the 365 X Torque. I'd like to convert that um, to a modern saw and port it. Who knows though, I might port the X-Torque top end. I want to do the 394 bottom, that's coming up, and uh, we'll just keep the party started. And you know what? I got an itch that I need to scratch. I think I'm going to buy a brand new power saw, but more on that when it happens. I think I'm going to buy my first brand new power saw and port it. Anyhow, bring you guys in, we'll heat this up, and we'll see if we can get this thing off. I hope we can. Okay, I'm going to use the torch for this. I don't want to get it too hot, just hot enough. Whoa, that's what happens when your torches sit outside all winter. 
I'm heating it on this side. All the ignition components are over here, so I'm applying heat on this side so I don't burn anything. Okay, just want to warm it up a bit. The crankshaft is frozen, so if we heat up the flywheel, hopefully we can get this thing off. Okay, I don't want to get it too hot, just enough. Okay, here's the puller I made. Again, it's just a washer, a piece of pipe, and uh, a half inch nut and bolt. Half inch might be a little big, but I figure if we got to put some torque on this thing, I'd rather have a bigger nut and bolt. And the other thing, notice I have the nut on here. I don't want this thing to flare out and crack. The nut should stop it from doing that. If you do this without a nut, often you're going to crack the crankshaft. And I don't know, I've never looked for a crankshaft for one of these, but I'm sure it's uh, unobtainium or you're buying a whole saw to get a crank. I get questions, where do I find parts? I buy complete saws often. Um, I'll buy a whole saw if I need a crank. Um, that's kind of just what you gotta do when you work on the old stuff. A lot of times these old saws, you fix them because you want them, not, not because it's super cost effective or anything like that. You just, you end up, you want one, so you, you make it happen. Okay, again, I just, I welded a nut all the way around here, welded this to the flange. This I made on my lathe, show you guys that. You could do this with a grinder. I just ground it down to a point, and that point will go in the end of the crankshaft. Hope this thing comes apart easily, I really do. I'm going to go get a wrench. Okay, hopefully this thing works. This is a, a, a Tin Man cobbled together puller. Yes, I could buy one, but. Oh, wow, this thing's tight. Just like the last one, I had a real hard time getting it to come apart. Okay, hammer. There we go. You guys see that? Off she came. Okay. Now these are usually fairly, they got good. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. I can feel some movement. Yeah. Okay. So we'll take this off. Just so wanted to make sure it's all the way off. Now remember, <laughs> I've done this before. You guys could laugh with me or at me because it is funny. Remember, there's a nut on there, so this thing's not going to come off. So don't start yarding on it. I've done that before and I was just laughing after. It's like, oh, there's a nut on there. Hence the reason why the flywheel won't come off. I have a feeling and I'm hoping that this saw was parked. Not because it ran out of spark. It was just parked. There we go. Look at the rust. Okay. That right there will make it not spark. What else do we got here? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at the rust in there. Okay. I'm going to sand this with some emery cloth and sand this. And I'll put this thing back together. I won't bore you guys with me sanding it. But again, this is your ignition, this is your coil, and all that kind of stuff. You can actually adjust these for advance. Um, kind of a neat setup. It is a pain to work on, and these are notorious for failure. So be prepared if you get one of these saws. You may need parts that are unobtainium. I think I have a coil for this, actually. Funny story. Okay, two minutes and an emery cloth. You can see though, there's still rust in between the little fins. Hopefully this works. These were really bad. See, I shined up the magnets. Okay, put this on its side. Oh, <laughs> that'll buff out. Okay, timing keys right here. Let's 
see if I can get this to go on. There we go. I can already feel that it has more magnet to it than it did before. Okay, now I'll put a piece of rope on here. Piece of rope in the spark plug hole. I'll put this nut back on. I'll put the outer fins so you guys can see. One, two, three screws to there. Put that on. Recoil, and then we can see if we have spark. Okay, I got it all back together. Hopefully the saw gods um, <laughs> are going to reward us with spark. Here we go. No. Ah. Well, that's a shame. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to put this whole saw back together. So you guys can see what it looks like when it's in one piece. And then unfortunately... It's uh, it's going back on the healing shelf so that um, until I can get some more time and figure out what I'm going to do with this thing, I'll have to do some research and see what ignitions fit on here, etc., etc. Give me a second. Okay, well I put the saw back together the best that I could. Look at this custom dog made for it. It's a shame this pipe will not fit on anything that I own. I tried the Sax Dolmars, the old Huskies I have. Um, nothing seems to be the same as this chassis. So, anyhow, Reds, we got no spark. There's not much I can do about that right now. So, I'll put this thing on the healing shelf. And just because I'm in the mood, let's, let's run a vintage Husqvarna with a pipe on it. Because I know you guys like that kind of stuff. This for you guys. Two ninety eight. Is there any gas in this thing? Yes, there is. You guys remember this? The Bullwinkle pipe. Pretty cool. Okay. Full choke. This is uh, ninety eight hundred cc power saw. This thing's hard to pull over, even with the decomp in it. Hold on, let's see. I don't run this thing forever. see the lineage between this saw and that saw okay very similar um, again this is 70s this saw is early 90s uh, the 298 this is the saw that failed because you couldn't pull them over like any of you guys that have ever started a 298 this is the hardest saw ever to pull over it's not because it has the most compression or it's the biggest saw they made the starter dogs closer together so you don't get quite the 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 purchase on it and it makes the saw really hard to pull over i'm going to see if i can do it here Reds, uh, we'll put this on the shelf. Here we go. She gets a spot right here for now. And uh, whew. this is a saw. You guys ask about this thing. See that? It's got a big hole in the oil tank. I got hosed, friends. I did. You ever buy a saw? I'll never forget that. I saw this saw. I'll let you guys go soon, but I'm 
saw this saw for sale. There you go. It was after work, and uh, the guy wanted decent dough for it. I phoned him. He's an older guy, and uh, seemed all right. Went into his shop, and he did small engine repair, and he said he didn't have any oil in it because it leaked a little bit. And I thought, yeah, old saw. Fired the saw up, and again, this thing hasn't been run in six months, probably. Fired the saw up, it ran really nice, so I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Well, <laughs> as soon as I put oil in it, it was all over my leg, and that was that, so. Ah, well, you win some, you lose some. Anyhow, friends, thanks for watching, take her easy, and again, if you have an old saw and you can't find the coil, it's behind the flywheel. It's probably a Bosch, and often they don't work, so. Um... I'll have to look on the old interwebs and see if I can find a Bosch ignition for an L65 or L77. I'm not even sure if they're the same and, and work with that. And again, you can make pullers that's just a flat washer, a piece of pipe, and a nut and a bolt. And away you go. That worked That worked like a charm. So, And I'm sure this will fit on other saws as well. Anyhow, friends, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later.